someone may have their sights on you and your valuables. Arnold Diaz hit some popular tourist spots with an expert and a hidden camera to show you that pickpockets and con artists speak a language anyone can understand. In Naples, Italy, bait-and-switch hustlers prey on vacationers, and they don't like their pictures taken. This woman, a pickpocket who targets tourists, is also camera shy. As are these Spanish ladies pulling the flower scam. Every year, thousands of travelers to Europe fall victim to crooks and con artists. Bob Arno specializes in capturing those crimes on videotape, tapes he uses in his tourist safety lectures. They love to steal from Americans, not because they're easy to steal from, but because we carry more money. Arno shot this tape at a popular vacation spot in Palma, Spain. These flower sellers are getting ready for work, but once the grandmother outfits and flowers are in place, it's time for the scams to begin. First, they give you a flower. They may shove it into your jacket, and they say, this is local tradition in Spain, please, one peseta. One peseta is nothing, you know, less than one cent. But watch what happens when tourists go to pay them. After this man hands the flower lady his money, she returns it, insisting it's the wrong bill. Then she reaches into his wallet to point out the correct bill and uses a slick little move to rob him right under his nose. It happens so fast, we asked Arno to show us how it's done. They don't want you to see down into your wallet. While one hand distracts you by shoving the money back in, their other hand, hidden by the flowers, is folding up bills and sliding them out. It doesn't always work. Sometimes the tourists catch on. But it's obviously lucrative enough to have become a popular scam in Spain. There are at least a hundred women that are on file with the police in each city who are experts at this. Italy is another favorite hangout for tourist thieves. So we went to Rome and Naples with Arno and his wife Bambi to get a first-hand look at how the crooks and con artists operate. In Rome, Arno pointed the way to the pickpockets, and we followed. The number one place are on the public transportation system. Could be on the bus, could be in the metro. That's because they like crowds. They love crowds. They call bus number 64 the Heaven to Hell Express, not just because it goes from the Vatican to Rome's central train station, but also because it's usually so crowded that it's heaven for pickpockets, but hell for unsuspecting tourists. That's why we took a ride with our specially marked wallet in the fanny pack and our camera in the glasses. We spotted this group of women headed for the bus stop. They didn't look suspicious to me, especially the two of them carrying their little babies. But Arno had a hunch they were a team of pickpockets. They're getting on the bus. They board the jam-packed 64 bus, and we get on with them. As I hold onto the pole, they press in around me. Sure enough, just seconds after the bus pulls away, they make their move. One of the hidden cameras I'm wearing shows two of their hands reaching for my hip pack. I can't see it happening because one woman holds her baby out towards me, using it as cover. Another hides her hands under her large purse. In no time at all, they open up my pack, take out the wallet, then zip it up again. If I hadn't been expecting it, I might never have noticed. But when they got off at the next stop, we jumped off in pursuit. You took my wallet? the wallet back. Yeah, give me my wallet. At first, they pretended not to know what we were talking about. But when we persisted, suddenly one woman pulled the wallet from behind her baby. Ah, oh, it just happened to be in there, huh? Why, you a thief? You're a thief. You're a pickpocket, huh? That must go. If the pickpockets are brazen and fearless enough, and many of them are, they'll try to pick your wallet right in the middle of the street in broad daylight. We know because they went for ours time after time. On a street full of hotels, Arno spotted another suspicious-looking group coming out of a store. They saw me and Arno's wife, obvious tourists, looking at postcards. Moments later, they approached us pressing a piece of cardboard against me and pretending to beg for food or money. But the begging is just a way to keep me from noticing what's going on underneath the cardboard. 
they want to shove it into you a little bit so that you're going to feel this sensation more than you're going to feel if there was nothing and they just start pulling here. Okay. It's a so technique it's Arno has seen so often. He's mastered it himself. Now they want to close it up so that when you look down, it looks like your bag is just like it was before. Fortunately, in our case, a good Samaritan passing by realized what was happening to us. Pay attention, he warns us in Italian. They're going to rip off your wallet. Discovered, they quickly dropped my wallet to the ground. Hey, thank you, thank you, grazie, grazie. Moments later, a different group of street thieves hit on me, but are foiled by another vigilant Italian. Leave it, she screams, then tells me they took your wallet. Our rescuer wasn't through with them yet, continuing to scold them. One thing we found out about pickpockets is they may be the people you least expect. We learned that lesson when we took a subway ride here at Roma Termini, the central station, with my wallet in my hip pocket and a camera in my backpack. It's the morning rush hour. Arno scans the crowd. He zeroes in on a couple of guys I never would have suspected as being pickpockets. These two old men who were standing behind me. They look too many times up at the sign. And they did that in order to scan you as to where you had your wallet. A train comes and they get on and then reach out to help me squeeze in right next to them. That's it. Once the train starts moving, you see the hand of the man behind me drop down and his fingers reach into my back pocket and slide my wallet out. They get off at the next stop to make their getaway, but we're close behind. You took my wallet. I felt you go in my pocket. No, no, I felt you. You and him over here. These pickpockets play innocent and say it wasn't them. I never got the wallet back. Arno suspects they either dropped it onto the tracks when we weren't looking, or this guy passed it to his partner who hopped on board the next train. Having now been pickpocketed four times in one day, it was time to turn to Arno for advice. You said don't let them get close to you, but if you're squeezed into the subway on the bus, everybody likes sardines. You're right. You don't have a chance. That's right. That's true. That's why I'm saying keep it up here or don't have cash. He also recommends a money belt or travel pouch that goes under your clothing. Better yet, leave most of your valuables in the hotel safe. Next stop, Naples, where visitors had better beware of the cleverly disguised bait-and-switch scam. Arno's wife took me to the area where the cruise ship stopped. The hustlers quickly moved in on us. A telephone. Telephone. Are we interested in buying a top-quality cell phone? Oh, a message. One, two, one, three. After a little bargaining, I agree to buy two phones for $100 apiece. One man puts the phones in a box, then in a bag, and ties the bag up. At the same time, our hidden cameras catch his partner slipping behind the newsstand to prepare for the switch. You, uh, must go. Then, while one distracts my attention, pointing to a tourist attraction across the street, his partner sneaks in to make the switch. Here it is in slow motion. His partner takes an identical bag that he'd hidden in his jacket, and they quickly exchange bags before I turn back around. When I go to untie it, they jump on their motor scooters and speed off. They obviously didn't want to be there when I opened the box and found no telephone, just a bottle of water. Bob Arno's caught the same ripoff on video several times. Here, he breaks the bad news to this Spanish tourist who had no idea he'd just been taken. How much did you pay? $300. $300. And he didn't get much sympathy or help from the local police. Neither did we. Look at their reaction when we stopped two Naples cops after we'd been ripped off. See? They're obviously amused by the same tale of woe they've heard from countless tourists. Meanwhile, the bait-and-switch hustlers continue to thrive here as if they own this street.
Now, where did I leave my pocketbook? Our travel security expert, Bob Arno, will be available to take your questions live online. And you can find out when by logging on to abcnews.com. It's a war of discretion as advised.